What up, nerds? This is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got two perfect scores on the SAT and one perfect score on the ACT. And today I'm going to teach you the rules for using a dash. All right, dashes are one of the punctuation marks that get tested both on the SAT and on the ACT. So we need to be rock solid on how we use dashes, how we are allowed to use dashes, so that we can answer questions in the SAT's writing section and the ACT's English section uh, in which dashes appear. Uh, both questions in which a dash needs to be there and questions in which a dash appears in an incorrect answer choice. We need to be able to sort through the answer choices in each case. The best way to do that is to learn how dashes work. Learn the rules that govern when you can and can't use a dash. So let me show you those rules. All right, there are two ways in which you can use a dash. I'm going to discuss each of those ways in just a moment. But first, let me distinguish between a dash and a hyphen. Dashes and hyphens are often confused. In fact, on most computers, uh, you create them the same way, or at least you can create them the same way. But just to be clear, a hyphen is the mark you make to join two words into one word. So for instance, if I were trying to say left-handed, I use a hyphen to join the word left to the word handed. Now the hyphen is not tested on either the SAT or the ACT. You do not need to know how to join two words into one using a hyphen. The hyphen isn't tested. The dash, by contrast, is tested. A dash is a punctuation mark that I can use within a sentence. So for instance, I could say, Dave, my dad, is a cool guy. In this case, the dash is being used as a punctuation mark. It is separating words from each other, not joining words into one. And this is the mark that does get tested. So let's talk about the rules that govern a dash. The first thing to know about dashes is that although they can be used in two different ways, wherever you find a dash, they tend to interrupt and emphasize. So wherever dashes appear, they tend to interrupt and emphasize. So if you have information that you want to interrupt a sentence to add, dashes can be a good way to do that. If you have information that you want to emphasize, dashes can be a good way to do that. These are stylistic concerns. Stylistic concerns usually don't give rise to an answers being right or wrong on the SAT or ACT. Usually the tests will give you hard, fast grammar rules why an answer is right or wrong. In other words, they usually don't make you rely on stylistic reasons to pick one answer over another, but it's still worthwhile to know what stylistic effect a dash has. Again, dashes tend to interrupt and emphasize. So now that we've talked about the stylistic impact of a dash, interrupting and emphasizing, let's talk about the specific grammatical situations in which you can use a dash. They're broadly divided into two categories. First of all, you can use a pair of dashes. We'll talk about that first, and then after we talk about that, we'll talk about how you can use a single dash as well. That's also possible. But first, how do we use a pair of dashes? So just like with commas, you can separate an interjection or interruption in a sentence with a pair of dashes. You would prefer dashes over commas if you want to emphasize that interruption. So if I need to interrupt a sentence to add information, or if I want to interject something into a sentence and emphasize it, interject something into a sentence and emphasize it, then I could use a pair of dashes in either case. Let me give you an example. If I said uh, LeBron James, who now plays for the Lakers, is from Ohio. So if I were trying to emphasize that interjected information, who now plays for the Lakers, if for some reason in context, I really wanted to emphasize that information that I'm adding, then I could separate that interjection from the rest of the sentence using a pair of dashes. Again, if you're going to use a pair of dashes, you've got to make sure that it is a pair of both dashes. In other words, don't use a dash to open the interruption and a comma to close it, or vice versa, a comma to open the interruption and a dash to close it. Generally speaking, you can use 
dashes or commas to separate any interruption into a sentence, but whatever the first one is, the second one has to be the same. So again, a pair of dashes or a pair of commas, not one dash and one comma or one comma and one dash. Stay consistent. All right, let me give you one more example of how we can use a pair of dashes to separate an interjection from the rest of the sentence. I could also say um, Mars, the only planet we may reach soon, remains inhospitable. So if I were trying to emphasize the fact that the only planet we might get to anytime soon is itself still inhospitable, that would be a good way to do it. I want to emphasize that information. I interject it into the sentence. I throw it in there and separate it with a pair of dashes. I've added it as an appositive. The grammatical structure between the dashes here is an appositive. All right, so hopefully we understand how to use a pair of dashes. Again, it's really simple. If you need to add information into a sentence or interject information into a sentence, you can separate the added or interjected information from the rest of the sentence using a pair of dashes in the same way that you can separate an additional piece of information or an interjection using a pair of commas. You would tend to favor dashes over commas when you want to emphasize that information. All right, let's turn now to using a single dash. You can also use a single dash. A lot of my students think that if they ever see a single dash, it's automatically wrong, but that's not the case. It is entirely possible to use a single dash correctly. The circumstances in which you can do it, though, are a little bit different. In order to use a single dash, it must be the case that you are adding information onto the end of a sentence if you want to emphasize that information. So, in order to do this, it must be the case that I have a more or less complete sentence on the left side of the dash. In other words, to give that in the form of a hard rule, to do this, there must be an independent clause on the left of the dash. In other words, what's on the left side of a single dash must be an independent clause. It must be able to stand on its own as a sentence. Then you can throw in a single dash and add some information on the end if you want to emphasize that info. For instance, I might say, I turned in my homework early. If you're trying to emphasize the fact that you turned it in early, you could throw that on to the end of an already complete sentence with the use of a single dash. I could also say, I will watch the Women's World Cup even if the U.S. loses. So if I want to add that information onto the end of the sentence because I'm emphasizing it, then I can do that with the single dash. Now note, again, in each case, what is on the left side of the single dash is an independent clause. It is a complete sentence unto itself. That is the only time that you can use a single dash to add information onto the end of a sentence. So again, in summary, you can interrupt a sentence to add information or interject something with a pair of dashes. You can add information onto the end of an already complete sentence with a single dash. If you're going to use a single dash, there must be an independent clause on its left. Now let's take a look at a question like you might see on the SAT or ACT that tests your ability to use a dash. Builders of multifamily housing developments report decreasing demand despite their having reduced prices to levels not seen in 10 years and are adjusting their sales forecasts accordingly. So we have the option here of leaving a comma in where it appears right now or we can delete the punctuation entirely or we can delete the punctuation and add the noun they, or we can replace the comma with a dash. So let's take a look at each of these one by one. So builders of multifamily housing developments report decreasing demand. Notice we have a dash right here. So it could be the case that that dash is a one-off single dash adding information onto the end of an already complete sentence. In fact, what comes on the left side of this dash is an independent clause. So technically it is possible that this could serve as a single dash depending on what happens afterwards. However, I think what they're actually trying to do here is separate an interruption to the rest of the sentence. I think the interruption is despite their having reduced prices, to levels not seen in 10 years. If we were to take that part out, let's put parentheses around it and remove it from the rest of the sentence. How does the sentence read? Builders of multifamily housing developments report decreasing demand and are adjusting their sales forecasts accordingly. 
that makes sense. The demand is down and they're adjusting their forecast. I think the purpose of this dash is to allow us to interrupt the sentence and add the information that the decreasing demand is actually in spite of the fact that we've reduced prices. So it looks like we're trying to separate an interruption from the rest of the sentence. Since that interruption begins with a dash, it needs to end with a dash as well. You can use commas to separate an interruption from the rest of the sentence, but if the interruption starts with a dash, it needs to end with a dash. That's why D is our answer. So that's all I've got for you today. Please don't forget to throw us a like if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video. Let us know what you want advice on from a two-time perfect score in our next video. We might feature your suggestion as the topic for our next video. You can also find a coupon code in the description below this video that you can use on our website, prepexpert.com, for discounts on all of our products. You can sign up for a course with myself or another instructor or sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.